You're welcome back to the Nigerian Filmmaker, the podcast for us to talk about Nigerian filmmakers, their films, and how we can build a diverse and functional industry. I'm your host, Selegot. On this episode, my guest is Nadine Ibrahim. She's a director and filmmaker. She has directed notable projects such as Through Her Eyes, I Am Not Corrupt, and Tolu. We talk about her documentary, Marked, Directing Children, and the story she loves to tell. If you're a new listener, you're welcome and I hope you enjoy. Hi Nadine, you're welcome to the Niger Filmmaker. Thanks for having me. All right, so can you introduce yourself? Okay, um, my name is Nadine Ibrahim. I'm a filmmaker from Northern Nigeria. Um, and what else do you want to know? Yeah, um, are you a director, writer? Um, I wear many hats. So I'm a writer, director, producer, editor. I kind of do everything. Yeah. <laughs> depending on the project. Okay. But let's, for the sake of one thing, let's say I'm a director. All right. Yeah, I can see that you have worked on like a lot of, um, you know, short projects and some features uh, from Through Her Eyes to Tolu to I Am Not Corrupt and then um, Marked. Yes. So um, with these different mediums, you know, the short film, the um, documentary, why did you choose these particular mediums? Um, well, so I studied film um, at university and then I also did um, a short course at the New York Film Academy and mm. I've always had a passion for storytelling. But Actually, from the start, all I wanted to do was feature films, um, fiction, fiction, feature films. Yeah. But I don't know, you know, life happens. And so I came back to Nigeria and what was on the table for me was more of, you know, um, corporate, corporate storytelling, uh, documentaries, uh, um, short videos and things like that. So, you know, I just began doing what, what, what was available to me back then. Yeah. But I guess short, short films was a great way to test the waters um, being fresh out of uni and coming back to Nigeria. Okay. So, yeah, let's go, um, you know, I guess further back into the past. Um, like, how did you discover filmmaking? Can you tell us that story? How did I discover filmmaking? Um, so... I, well, I started getting interested in the whole film process when I was in um, A-levels. Yeah. So uh, I, I went to school in the UK and you're supposed to choose, you know, four subjects. So I chose media studies and arts as two of those. And I realized that my strengths, my strengths were mostly in those. So I kept acing those, those subjects yeah. and not failing the rest. We're not doing as great. So, you know, I decided to look into it a bit more and I realized that I really enjoyed the aspect of, you know, storytelling and the media um, processes. So I decided to, you know, fine tune my skills and decided to, you know, study at university, take more courses. And yeah, I guess that's how I found myself in this field. Okay. You know, I, I read an article where you mentioned your love for portraiture emotion and um, the different subjects. What do you um, generally like to um, make your films about? Um, so, yeah, so for me, the human angle is always the most interesting part of it. Um, because for me, creating a story, um, you know, creating a story about different characters and the way they live their lives and how relatable they can be is always an exciting process for me. Um, most of my films are about things that, you know, I read online or people I actually meet yeah. and, you know, I just get really fascinated by the stories and the ideas of, you know, how I can tell their stories visually in a captivating way for people to watch. And yeah, so f yeah, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's really, it's really exciting to be able to, you know, dissect people's lives and show it visually in a, in an emotive, but interesting, you know, way. So yeah, let's, let's look at, um, through her eyes. Um, it got into Afri and was nominated for best short film and also 
a semi-finalist at um, Los Angeles Cinema Festival. How was that, like, especially for it coming early in your career? It was exciting to get the recognition. It was my first short film. Um, I wasn't sure which way it was going to go, but I was really passionate about the, the narrative that I chose. So it was really exciting to see that, you know, not only a national but international audience was interested in that story. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was a humbling experience to get such reception for my work yeah. when I was just starting out. But I guess it, it was also very encouraging and it motivated me to keep going. Okay, so why did you choose this particular story about um, the suicide bomber? Um, so through her eyes, I made through her eyes at a time where in the news all we were hearing about was Boko Haram and the, you know, the attacks that were going on all around Nigeria. Yeah. And for me, it was very emotional to keep reading about this and looking at the angle of these young girls from northern Nigeria blowing themselves up. I found it an interesting topic to explore. You know, I just thought, what is um, what what is the thought process a little girl would go through to be able to, you know, strap herself up and go and actually like, you know, press a button to blow herself up. So I did a lot of research about it. I visited Medugri and... I thought it would be an interesting perspective to tell the story from the standpoint of a young girl, not just a suicide bomber, you know? Like, you read it, you read these articles and you see it just says suicide bomber and then it talks about all the people that were killed. But we never really talk about the actual, um, the actual girl that committed, you know, the suicide. It was, was she a terrorist? Is she a terrorist? Was she born a terrorist? So all those questions I was hoping that I could you know, shed light on and reflect with the film. All right. So, um, so um, I mean, I've noticed like m most of the um, projects you've worked on, like there's always this, there's something, I guess, special about it from through her eyes being about the suicide bomber to I am not corrupt um, to Tolu. Well, how would you say you found your voice? you know, um, this unique voice telling these stories like in a quite unique way? So with most of my work, I always plan to make a statement with what I make. Um, I I always have a, at the back of my mind that I don't want to make something that's already out there. And I don't want to, you know, tell the same story over and over again. If it's the same kind of story, let it be a different perspective that people haven't seen before. Yeah. And with my films, I find it interesting because it reaches a larger audience. You want to say something, but you don't exactly know how or you don't know how to get people to listen. And loads of people turn to media, you know, for entertainment, for news, for insights. Um, so using, I guess, film as a medium to shed light on things that, I, that I'm passionate about and want to speak about is, is always what it is for me. Um, so which is why most of my films, you know, make statements, whether it's about politics, whether it's about gender equality, whether it's about terrorism. I always try to make sure that there's some sort of, you know, um, subcontext behind it and some sort of like information I'm putting out there to raise awareness for things that I care about. Yeah. OK, so yeah, let's talk about um, Tolu, um, quite a unique film. I guess a lot of green screen was done for the film. Can you talk us through making that film? Uh, okay, Tolu. So I made Tolu with my team in Lagos. And what we did was initially we wanted to shoot in Makoko. Yeah. But uh, we had issues. <laughs> you know how Lagos is and shooting in Lagos, it can be quite stressful. Mm. Um, so that didn't work out and a friend of mine, um, an actor, he was an actor in a Caribbean, he actually let us know about this fishing community, um, way past Lekki, all the way down past this, um, this new Dangote refinery. So we drove all the way down there and we saw the community and it was really beautiful and it matched the, you know, the description of my script, the yeah. whole idea of a community living on water. So we decided we would shoot there. Um, it was one of actually one of the most challenging projects I've worked on because one, I was out of my comfort zone. I was all the way in Lagos. Um, so we, we flew from Abuja to Lagos yeah. and I was working with an amazing cast. I mean, I was working with 
cast like a cast member that were on blockbuster films you know so it was quite intimidating yeah but also exciting you know uh um wale ojo karibi som kele and also halima it's the young actress so it was really exciting working with a team like that um and one of my really good friends he shot um through her eyes as of he also shot tulu which was exciting to collaborate with him again yeah and i would say it was ex- it was an exciting journey it was we learned a lot from it i mean i had never shot green screen before i had never shot on water before i had never shot in a place where there was no zero ex- electricity so it came with its challenges as well yeah um but all in all it was it was an exciting you know experience being able to visit that community and be able to tell the story as authentic as i could Okay so you mentioned it kind of been intimidating working with all these stars how did you handle that Well to be honest it was intimidating at first and getting on set the first day because I didn't know what to expect I hadn't worked with them before but once I met them told them my vision we walked through the script it was pretty easy um they were really really beautiful people they had amazing personalities they were easy to work with i didn't have to do much directing to be honest cuz as soon as i told them what i was going for it was very easy for them to deliver so yeah um i didn't i didn't have any issues once i got on set it's that it's just that fear you know i think everybody has that fear walking on a set for the first time yeah um with a new crew and a new cast and not knowing what to expect but in the end it turned out amazing. Okay. So how many days did you guys spend shooting this film? Uh we shot that for 2 days. Did you like kind of encounter any challenges or it went pretty smooth? Um of course every production has its challenges. Uh we had issues with like I said there was no electricity there. Yeah. And our backup generator wasn't working. So most of the shots that we had planned to use lights, we had to use natural lights. Um the challenges we had was obviously when we were losing daylight we then had to um figure out how to shoot the night scenes without um messing up um our vision so that tech tech we had technical issues yeah um also halima halima the main actress she actually couldn't swim so before we started shooting tolu we yeah. took her it's i i personally took her for swimming lessons and i taught her how to swim I don't know how 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 great I did but at least she just wasn't scared of the water anymore so which yeah. was good enough for us however there was supposed to be one scene where we shot underwater but once we got there um it was a lot scarier than it was in a pool you know so yeah. it didn't quite work out the way we had planned but bless bless her soul she actually did try and she fell into that water quite a few times we just didn't use it in the film Okay. I mean in true her eyes and with Tolu you worked with them um, children. How was this experience? It was great. Both um well uh with through her eyes um Anissa she didn't have um experience acting so it was new to both of us. Um I I had directed a child actor in my uni days. Yeah. So I had a bit of experience, you know, with how to direct them, how to talk to them, get them comfortable on set. Um but with every experience is different and it was it's it's not challenging, but you have to have a lot of patience, you know, because you're dealing with children and they don't understand the world that you do. Yeah. So it's um so it's a process, I guess, but it's, it's an interesting one. Okay, so apart from apart from being patient, what have you found that works with you know working with kids on set um in terms of lessons that i learned working with kids i would say when they're tired listen to them <laughs> because there's only so much they can give and if they're in a bad mood they're not going to deliver you know you're going to see it in their faces kids are children are the most honest people in the world yeah. so then they they can't hide how they feel you know so it's it it can be frustrating for us because we need to get the job done and we you know we're running on time and money and all of this but to them it's not they're not thinking about all of those things you know so you have to be um i guess you have to be patient and understanding with them and, and see the world through their eyes in order to get them to <laughs> to deliver okay let's go to i am not corrupt um your film went viral Congrats on that. 
Thank you. That was it. That was really exciting. Um, we actually did the film for the Yaradua Foundation in collaboration with the MacArthur Foundation. Yeah. Um, so we did that. Uh, we shot that in a studio in Lagos, and the clients we had were very, were very, um, were very clear on the message they were trying to pass across. You know. Yeah. So we worked. I worked with. Um, a script writer called Sheila. She did a brilliant job in getting, you know, the dialogue so accurate. And we just knew we needed to be deliberate in the message that we were trying to pass across with it. You know, it's a conversation between um, two, from two different worlds. And the, everybody wants to voice out their concerns and their opinions. And we just wanted both sides to be heard, you know? Yeah. So that was, that was a really exciting project. It was the first proper project I worked in a studio so that was exciting as well um, you know setting it up with the lights and figuring out how we were going to do the movements and set design and all of that so that that's up to, to date that's one of my favorite projects as well okay. I think all my projects are my favorite projects because I've learned everything yeah. <laughs> I've learned so much from each of them yeah okay so yeah let's talk about um, Marked um, congrats on getting getting it on Netflix Thank you. Yeah. Thank so you. how how Biggest easy movie. was that to do? How easy was what getting it on Netflix? Yeah. It wasn't that easy. <laughs> um, I mean, this is the thing, right? So you have a film and you make it, and then once it gets to wherever it gets to, people just assume that it happened overnight. And for me, it just wasn't the case. I actually filmed Mar Marked. We shot and filmed, screened everything. Um, Marked was created three years ago. Yeah. And um, I submitted it to so many festivals. First of all, let's start from the cuts. I had done multiple cuts. Yeah. And it was really hard to find, you know, with documentaries, it's really hard to to get it right because you need to find, you need to engage people and you need to um, be able to hold their attention for as mm. long as the documentary will go. So Mark started off as one hour, one and a half hours, then it went to 40 minutes, then it okay. went to 30 minutes, then it went to 20 minutes. So the whole editing journey um, was a thing on its own. Um, and then when we were done, we submitted to lots of festivals and we got lots of rejections. So, yeah. so it's been a really long journey. I mean, we submitted to Afrif, we've submitted to AMBCA, we submitted to international festivals. And for some reason, like, it just wasn't doing so great, you know. So it was quite disappointing at first. Um, but of course, you you know when you're coming into the film industry, like it's so diverse. There's so many. There's so much competition. You can't just give up once. Um, you get a few no's because you're going to get a lot of no's. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we kept trying, trying. That's actually one of the reasons why we did quite a few different edits because we were trying to target certain festivals, trying to get into short competitions, long competitions. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I guess the successes with Mark Marked would be um, the premiere we had in Abuja, which was received quite well. Uh, we had the photo exhibition as well. Uh, we also screened the documentary at a at an exhibition in London called Scarred, which was beautiful. Yeah. Um, and then now Netflix. So it's it's been a long journey here. Um, and my team, you know, have been amazing with me in, in for production and pre-production. And yeah, I mean, I'm just really glad that finally it's been received well and we're on such an amazing platform that people can watch and um, enjoy it. And hopefully they enjoy it as much as we enjoyed making it. Yeah. I mean, I must say that the um, color was vibrant and getting like such a comprehensive cross-section of people in Nigeria, you know, getting all these points of view, it was really nice to, you know, find out all those um, inside stories. Yeah, no, it was, it was a really fun um, journey traveling through the different states in Nigeria to get these stories. Um, it wasn't as easy as it looks <laughs> when yeah. you see the finished product because there was a lot of convincing um, most of these people most of, all of actually didn't know us from anywhere um, 
and you know we came with our cameras which was also foreign to them so it was quite hard to get them to sit in front of the camera and actually trust us but in the end we did and we're grateful for that um and i only wish that we could have you know put a lot more into the documentary but you know um as it is now i guess it's perfect for the audience yeah so like um how many states did you shoot it in um i think we visited about 26 states wow yeah <laughs> and it was over two trips so the first trip we went through um it was myself ibrahim daddy um and victor adewale one of the adewale sorry <laughs> one of the photographers and we traveled through the south yeah. and then afterwards um we went to the north with talid and the same ibrahim daddy and uh dayo yeah the second time around we had a bigger team so it was a lot easier for us to achieve um what we did okay so um i mean you mentioned that you went from a cut that was one hour 30 minutes to 20 minutes what was happening at each point in time what did you have to let go of um so the thing about marx is that it's a lot of talking heads right yeah you have lots of people just looking at the camera telling you about their story and their journey and why they have these marks so if you have an hour and a half of people just talk, talking at this at this uh, you know camera I think people would turn off um, and switch off, you know, um, after, you know, maybe 30 minutes or 40 minutes because yeah. it could get quite tiring just watching Talking Heads. And I had a, uh, I had a certain vision for the documentary in that I didn't want to go out of this bubble of the interviews and the drone shots. Uh. So it wasn't an option for me to, you know, um, you know, record people's lives um, in each setting and stuff like that. So to make it, I guess, to get to answer your question, to make it more interesting and more engaging, I had to cut a lot of the interviews um, and just pick my most powerful ones, which yeah. is what you would see on the Netflix version. Okay. And um, you mentioned you submitted to countless festivals. I'm sure you spent a lot of money on that. How do you stay encouraged to put money into like your festival festival run in the future on other projects um so something i've learned along the way is that not every film you make you should put into festivals and also know the festivals you are trying to submit to and what exactly they are looking for so with um with my short films i was deliberate in the festivals i was selecting because i knew the um you know the genre and the subject matter i was exploring wouldn't appeal to some festivals but with marked i was a bit over ambitious in thinking that loads of festivals will find it more engaging yeah. so i did spend a lot of money submitting to the high-end toronto to Cannes, to all those um, festivals you know yeah um and that's not what they're looking for i guess because i didn't get into them um, but in terms of, you know, staying motivated to keep going, it's, it's that you, you need to have at the back of your mind that your film is not for everyone. Mm. But once you find the people that it is for, then you've struck gold. And if in my case, I went to quite a few places and they said no, and Netflix said yes, which is amazing. Um, so, yeah. And for, for me, the more I see it, it the, the better. So it's a documentary. It's not a film that's going to, you know, make money in the cinemas and stuff like that so for me the most important thing was that people would watch it and um, receive it well okay so congrats on recently becoming a mother thank you yeah um would you say motherhood has changed um the kind of stories you want to tell um no i would say it has it would probably um make me refine my skills a bit more in terms of paying attention to details because I'm being more patient because having a baby is a whole other <laughs> ball game um, I've learned a lot from just him alone yeah. and um, yeah I haven't worked on any huge projects since him because obviously I've been <laughs> he's been my main project yeah but I, I'm hoping um, if I have changed at all it would be for the better because 
I've learned a lot from him so far. That's nice. So um, what are you currently working on? I'm currently working on my next project, which is a TV drama series set in northern Nigeria. Um, I can't say too much about it now, (laughs) but um, we are going to explore, you know, relationships, culture, religion and identity through the lens of the female, (laughs) through the lens of um, northern Nigerian women. Yeah. And at what stage are you currently on the project? Still development? Um, yes, we've just finished um, the script, so we're, we're in pre-production at the moment. Okay. Yes. And um, like, um, where are you planning for it to end up? Um, I cannot say for now. Okay. Um, it is a 10-episode um, series. I'm only thinking of season one at the moment. Yeah. But God gets on... Um, any platform whether it's uh netflix or you know or dstv i'm not quite sure where i want the home for it to be just yet okay okay so let's say you're stuck you're stuck on an island and you only have one um movie or tv series to keep watching which one would that be oh hmm. <laughs> um this is us why that one um, because I love This Is Us. It's an amazing character-driven series about life. And I couldn't find any other series more interesting than that. The characters themselves are like just really interesting. All right, now to the final question. So um, you, you work in Nigeria, you make your films in Nigeria. Um, there are a lot of mm-hmm. things with the industry that are kind of frustrating that kind of slow you down when you're trying to execute stuff what's your top top priority that you want to be improved in the industry with the whole like value chain um i would say hmm i would say it would be great for people to um you know um have more avenues to um more avenues to uh, ex- exhibit their work, you know, um, whether it's whether it's Netflix or other um, video pl- platforms, because it's really hard for people to get their content seen. I mean, most people make their films aim for cinema, and then after cinema, it disappears. You know, now that Netflix is great because that seems to be the avenue everybody goes towards. But it would be great to have more avenues for people, more platforms for people to showcase their work. Okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I guess that's what keeps feeding the industry. The more the filmmakers make money, the more they invest into future projects. Mhm. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, how can people keep up with your work? Um, I'm very active on Instagram, so when I do have stuff coming out, I promote it on there. Um, and I also have a website that I release um, some of my content. Everybody should watch Marked on Netflix. <laughs> um, we're really excited that it's on there and it's worldwide as well. So wherever you are, you can watch it. And I'd love to get people's feedback and what they think of it in general. Okay. Thanks, Nadine, for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. We have come to the end of this episode. Please remember to leave a rating and a review. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Zelegov Film and the podcast also on Instagram and Twitter at the Niger Film Pod. See you on the next episode. Have a good one.